Before we invite any more content creators out here, we're going to let you hear from the client side. So what does it mean? We're going to be hearing from the corporate side, the brand side, and we have invited two experienced um, marketers and also, um, how do you call that, like chairman of companies to give them, give you their point of views of what they think about working with social media influencer. For, for, for the first one, we have Mr. George Go, who is the chairman of Osea International Limited, deputy chairman of Harvey Norman Osea, founder of World of Sports and Singapore ambassador to Morocco, and also a philanthropist. And at the age of 48, he has owned seven listed companies. Please join hands and welcome Mr. Go. Thank you, thank you, Ben. Thank you. Take a seat. And for our second guest, his name is York Ditzel. He runs a brand consultancy um, business in Singapore with clients active in Asia and Asia Pacific. And he's also a, an adjunct faculty in Singapore in School of Business, Singapore Management of University Singapore Management University. I'm so sorry, it's been a really long day. And he teaches at Strategic Brand Management and Advertising. And from 2013 to 2016, he oversaw marketing and PR department at Audi Korea. And then in 2017, he went on to be the global head of creative and sales at sales media at Audi HQ. Please help me welcome Mr. Ditzel. Hello. Hi, Mr. Go and Mr. Ditzel. Thanks for joining me. Um, so today, I think it's so interesting to be able to speak to y'all because over the last three sessions that we had, we have been speaking to content creators about the way they create and why they come into this industry. But also being part of content creators, what we would also like to work with is with brands. And with two of your expertise, we would like to hear more about um, your experiences when it comes to that. So maybe my first question can go out to Mr. Go. Mr. Go, can you please tell us about how Harvey Norman came to Asia? Now, in 1999, um, there's a long time ago, about 23 years ago. Now, I was in Australia. Um, my MD was talking to me uh, during the breakfast time, say, in Australia, there's a very big company, uh, price earning about 40 to 45 times. Uh, only Bill Gates can do that at that point in time. But Australian company, I totally can't believe it. But anyway, uh, I asked my MD, please arrange for me to meet up. Uh, finally, I have an opportunity to meet up the, this Australian, the entrepreneur, the top richest man uh, in Australia. We have a very good conversation during the, the dinner times. So he invited me to say that, why Mr. Go, come to my office at some point in time. Of course, this is important for me as an Asian entrepreneur. I would like to visit his company, but I met a few executives at the office uh, we have a very good chat about issues in the next 10, 20, and 30 years. Now, what I explained to him is Asia is going to be the next uh, economic boom. You should consider Asia uh, is one of the key market. So I managed to convince him, say, why don't you invest in Singapore? So when I was in Singapore, I look at the same trade, whether we can do well. So I discussed with him, yes, there is an opportunity because of the financial crisis in 1997. So we managed to acquire one company, uh, it's a listed company. So we managed to control the company in 1999. Now, the branding is not uh, the Harvey Norman. The branding is the uh, corporate Tama at that point in time. Now we rebranding it into Harvey Norman. Uh, of course, this process take a very, very long process, uh, close to now, it's about 23 years now. Now, the whole exercise of the acquisition, because this is a public listed company, you need to do a general offer. But what I want to share with the young people here is uh, when you see opportunity like this, uh, you got to work toward it. 
Uh, you can't just sit there and say that he will let the business to come to you. There is no such thing at all. It's very important when you see opportunity, you talk to people. Uh, don't worry about whether he, he's a billionaire or millionaire. Don't worry about that. At the point in time, I think he's a billionaire. I'm not. I'm a millionaire. But it's okay. You just sell the story of the Asian story. If he convene, he will say, yes, this is going to the big market. So 23 years, we have proved ourselves. So our sales have gone up uh, multiple times since we start uh, the rebranding. Now, for you, I believe in the future, you can do the same thing. So I have this opportunity 23 years ago just to share with you how the acquisition takes place and Harvey Norman today in Singapore, in Asia. Thank you. So basically, you were presented with an opportunity from Australia and you saw that at that point in time, Asia market was booming. So you decided yes. to bring in that company at that point, not named Harvey Norman Correct. and converted it, rebranded it as Harvey Norman. So is that then company still operating in Australia? Yes. Uh, in Australia, of course, they are one of the largest electrical electronic company in New Zealand as well. But in Asia, I can say basically zero present at that point in time because the name is not Harvey Norman. But today, if you're across Malaysia, you can see uh, we have more than 30 stores. In the next six years, we are going to uh, multiply by three times. Wow. Uh, we are going to do a big expansion yeah, in the next six years. So in Singapore, we do the same thing. We hope we, we can open another mega store. Uh, especially now the COVID is over. So if we can expand in Singapore another mega store, I think that will be wonderful. I believe you, everyone is our customer, right? Put up your hand if you're my customer. Who has yeah, been thank to you very much. heard of Harvey Norman before? Yeah, thank you, thank you. That's why we survived, right? The, <laughs> the more hand you put up, that means we will stay. Right? Do you write Harvey Norman? I hope so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Goh. So my next question goes out to Mr. Ditzel. Mr. Ditzel, you're from Germany, am I right? Or yes, that's correct. Okay. So you came to Asia um, with Audi in Korea and then went on to be the global head. And then right now you are starting, you have started a branding consultancy in Singapore. Why did you choose Asia and why did you choose to start a branding consultancy right here in Singapore? Well, first of all, why did I start a consultancy and why here, right? So, right. so two different questions. Why here? Because uh, um, I love Singapore. I've been here for a long, long time. And right. uh, it's, it's Asia for beginners, right? It's so easy to live here uh, and it's easy to travel around the region and, and go to all the other markets. So it's a great place to be and it's a very free and open um, society from a business point of view um, and and why why branding because people love brands and okay. uh, people have people buy into brands they buy brands but they also buy into them they have expectations of brands but these expectations change over time right right some time ago it was about convenience and maybe price now people asking questions about values, right? What are your values? We don't talk about um, unique sales proposition. We talk about unique value proposition. What do you stand for? How do you produce? How do you treat your staff? How do you treat the environment and everything, right? And uh, not all brands are very kind of aware of that or know the right answers to give. And that's what we do. We help them with that. Okay, but... Um you, you talk about how Singapore is a easy uh, a, a beginner for Asia, right? And how it's easy to live in and things like that. But we also hear things where like the cost of living is very high and things like that. So for foreigners coming to Singapore and starting a business, is that uh, a high entry bar or not at all? I think the entry bar for foreigners, I, I, I think cost of living uh, is, is debatable, debatable um, okay. because all the comparisons, they're all bullshit. I'm sorry because they compare, be, be, in, in order to have a comparison, they assume things right. Right, that are not necessarily true. So they assume you live in a condo, they assume you go to a restaurant, they assume to drive a car, otherwise they cannot compare. But most of us, I don't have a car, I eat at hawker stalls, and, and so that dramatically lowers my, my cost of living, right? So, so it's a bit kind of, you know, iffy, the kind of the whole comparison. I think what is, a, um, business barrier for, for, for anybody who wants to come to Singapore from the outside and set up a brand 
is the hiring practices that are um, that are mandated by the governments that you have to have Singaporeans and uh, I hear from many people that say oh it's kind of difficult because I found this great person from the Philippines or this great person from India but because of quota I find it difficult so some are struggling with that from a business perspective even though I do understand why the government would have quotas like that so, so I think that's more of a concern than any kind of cost of living because that's up to you so do you feel like there is a case-by-case -case basis in terms of um, whether the cost of living and the cost of setting up a business is high is specific to an individual or do you feel like it's a generic thing where what whoever is coming up with that cost of living um, ranking is just misjudging the whole thing? I think there's a lot of individual decisions behind that. Like anything, right? I make decisions about my business, I make decisions about brands, and brands make decisions about who they want to be and how they want to communicate. Many of these are individual decisions, and, uh, and therefore I think it's very hard to say, oh, in general, this is the kind of climate that we're working in. Right, right. Thank you for sharing the insight with us. So back to Mr. Go, um, can you tell us about about your experience in building and strengthening the brand of Harvey Norman since you brought brought the company into Singapore and rebranded it as Harvey Norman? Now, to establish the brand, especially for you as an influencer, I mean, take years, all right? Importantly, you had to keep consistent. If you look at Harvey Norman uh, in 1999 when we converted into uh, so-called new branding in Singapore. You you are the same, right? You will be a new branding as you establish your own branding. Now, you look at Harvey Norman today, you know, of course, everybody knows advertisement is very strong in, uh, in radio and paper and so on. This is one part of it. The customer, uh, the customer experience when you go to the store, you can see the consistent, the flow is the lightings and the merchandise display. And the customer service is another one, all right? Everybody expect to go into the RV Norman, you say the customer service must be this, right? Not only customer service itself, you must also make sure the product itself is, make sure the confident level of genuine product. I, I have a confidence to buy from RV Norman, I know it's the genuine product. Uh, most important for the customer, you will always look at pricing, right? If your pricing is above the market, of course, we don't like it at all. You are not competitive enough. Now, we talk about warranty, and another thing uh, is important. If you want to sell a product, you talk about warranty. Then after warranty, they will say the extended warranty as well. Now, there are many other factors for Enzyme. Another, and another factor is about after-sales service, all right? Can we go back to Harvey Norman? We're talking about after-sales service. This is another thing. Now, you can see the staff, whether it's trained or not trained, you can tell. Uh, when you are sitting at the, uh, at the store and you discuss with them, you know whether they have the knowledge of the product or not. It's very clear on that. If you look at the whole spectrum, there's quite a lot of things to build one brand. So but everybody say, just only put a few percentage points to say that I want to advertise and put more dollars. No, 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 no. You don't build a brand like this. My friend, if you want to build your own brand, you need to be careful your own image. Uh, it's not that easy because it's, it's easy to, 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 to start a brand, to maintain it is a very difficult. So we took 23 years to reach today Harvey Norman, so everybody know Harvey Norman. So we are continue, continue, continue to improve ourselves, and we take our customers seriously. Our takes our customers' uh, uh, comment also very serious. So I give you this other few, uh, give you some thought about it. To build a brand, it really takes a years. Okay, Mr. Go, you, you talk about rebranding from Australia to Singapore, right? Um, let's not talk about how much it has rebranded till today, but at the point when you brought Harvey Norman as it is to Singapore, how much of a rebranding did you do? Like, was it just a change of name or even like the products and the culture were also rebranded? To change a name actually is, 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 is the easiest is, is the easier one. Yeah. You just take out a signage and you put Alibaba or put somebody else. So it's, it's, not, it's not a difficult one. Right. All right. Uh, but the difficult is how you consistently to, to, to build the image. Well, that one is a difficult one. The most difficult one is the royalty by your customer. 
You know, your customer can go away overnight because if they felt you'd be cheated, the pricing is overpriced, the service is no good. Even delivery man is not up to the level, they say you go home. Installation, they say, what happened to the uncle? Install my fridge and whatever it is. So every process itself you need to think to, include the chairman and the deputy chairman. i give you one example. One guy called me one day to say that, George, I knew I, 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 I have one complaint about your washing machine. I say, what is going on? I say, yeah, this is going on. We call the, the store. They say a week and two and three on. I say, don't worry. I will give a call. You know what I did? You know, in 24 hours, we send a new one to the home and take the old one and go back. And then we sort it out internally at the back. But you need to give the kind of attention to your customer. So of course, the customer called me back to say, George, I thank you. I love you. Of course, uh, it will love me, right? It will give you a new one, depressed, the one one year old washing machine. So, but this is the service standard we must set. But not everyone will going to do that. Of course, we got genuine case, we will definitely do that. This is called above the service. So, is Harvey Norman a fully Singapore company today, or does it still have ties with its parent company in Australia? It's a joint venture between the Singapore uh, co uh, company versus the Australia. It's a joint venture. Because we take uh, venture very seriously because we want the intellectual or own ownership in this part of the world. We don't take franchise. Right. Uh, because franchise, you know, it may come and go. But for you, you are very fortunate. Remember, you own your own brand. As a content creator. Yes. Don't destroy it. You always remember. Number one, so your name. Put your branding seriously, like the Kardashian family, right? And no sex tape. No tax pay. <laughs> Don't destroy it, my dear. Please take care of your image very well. You have the best branding in the world, you yourself, all right? You put whatever name you decide, your name, like Kylie, right? I remember. She's the billion A now. You can do the same thing. Second, you got thousands of followers. Just like us, we have thousands of uh, the customers. They follow you, what you do, what you, what, what, what you purchase. So treat them nicely, just like we take care of our customer, no different. Your content creation, I always say influencer is the very talented people, I should say that. More talented than many, many, many industries. You are very talented, but focus, okay? Don't jump from A to Z. Nobody was successful from a business from A to Z. You sell from Kalipop to everything. So I don't know whether you can make it. Look at where is your space. Choose one, two, three. Most important, you choose the client who can pay you money. Eh? No point you go and choose the client that cannot pay you. At the end, give you a few Kalipop, or give you a few uh, lollipop or whatever it is. Right? So don't do that. All right? Important to find the, cu the customer that who can pay. Search for the customer who can pay you and you do a best content creative for them. I see. All right. So go for clients or brands who are willing to pay. Um, try not to do for exposure. I, th I feel like unless you're starting out, um, that is not a viable option. But I feel like that's a very good um, encouragement for content creators that we are um, very powerful in the talents that we have. So harness it and be proud of it. Mr. Ditzer, you were going to add something just now. Was I wrong? Or I was, I was going to add that... Uh, oh, I was going to add many things. I was going to <laughs> add... Uh, I, I disagree about no, te no sex tape because that could be part of your brand, right? I mean, it, it has served them well. Wait, say that so, again. You, you so disagree with what? With no sex tape. Oh, uh -huh. okay. Because it could, it could be part of your brand. So, so the point is... It's not a joke. The point is, um, you need to understand who you are and, and what you stand for. And I think that's the very first um, point that, that is important, right? right. Um, as a brand, as any brand, personal brand, big corporate brand, influencer brand, or whatever, right? Um, who is my target, number one, right? That's and true. how I'm going to talk to them and what am I going to say, right? So, so you need to be relevant. If you're not relevant, you can be, you know, you can have many, many followers, but e eventually you will not be successful, right? If you're not differentiated from everybody else, 
then the question is also, okay, what's the point, right? Why, why, why should I follow you if you're the same as so many others, right? So you right. need to find your niche. You need to find your competency. You need to, you cannot be famous for being famous. That works for a handful of people, but for most it doesn't, right? So what's your competency? What do you stand for as a brand, as a personal brand, right? And then number three, you need to be super consistent. So that could be, um, a, a positioning that is a little bit risque, talking, coming back to the sex tape, that could be your niche, right? Right. But for many, of course, the niche would be you're very good at making people laugh, you're, you're good at cooking, you're good at makeup, you're good at whatever, right? And mm -hmm. stick to that niche and be very, very consistent in the way you get your brand across in everything you do, also in, in your person, right? Because many of those brands, bigger brands, smaller brands, commercial brands, um, have fallen because um, they, they, they forgot a touch point, right? We've heard from George many, many different touch points, right? right. People are an important touch point. The person behind the brand is a touch point. So if, if they did something stupid, that could have a very, very bad impact on the brand. So am I right to say that you you what what you are trying to say is as a content creator know what you stand for and know your niche and you know it can also be related to sex tape but let's not focus on that but as long as you know your own like um, passion and niche and you know the audience that you're going for that can be used as a tool to harness the strength of the numbers which can turn it into a career. Yeah, that's what I said. Okay, thank you. Um, I I just graduated from SMU right now. <laughs> okay, so the next question is for Mr. Ditzel. Um. As a branding consultancy, right? You know, if when when people go to digital marketing agency, um, like for brands to who goes to this digital agency, digital marketing agency, they have KPIs like engagements or things like that. What are the KPIs for a branding consultancy company? How do you measure measure branding? Okay, so you measure. So it's basically how do you define success? Right. right. So so you have to ask yourself before you do anything, what do you want to achieve? Right? What is your, your challenge? Is your challenge awareness? Nobody knows about your brand, right? Then you measure awareness before and after. Maybe everybody knows about your brand, but they have the wrong idea. So it's about perception, right? And then you go out, you talk to people, you, you check perception and find out what do most people think about you because that's what matters. Not what you think matters, what they think matters, right? And so what's their perception and what can you do? Who can you work with? What kind of channels can you use to make sure that people kind of change their mind, which is very, very hard to do and takes a very long time, right? right? So, so you define what your challenge is and, and you say, okay, what do, what do you want to achieve? How can you even measure that? Right, right. And then in the end, you, you, have, you put some measures in place. You do some focus groups. You do some online questionnaires or whatever uh, to see was there any movement during uh, the course of the campaign. So would you say that like the, the KPIs for a uh, branding consultancy company is actually self-imposed between the client, client and, and your, yourself to determine how you pr um, track the growth of your service. Yeah, of course. It's something that, that you agree on and it's also medium to long term. Right, right. So, so in, in my corporate roles, I always had the biggest fights with the head of sales. Right. Because the head of sales has a very, very short term KPI, right? Weekly okay. or monthly. And, and they need numbers, mm -hmm. right? I don't need numbers. I need brand reputation exactly. over time. So he comes in and said, oh, let's do some big uh, campaign and put a big price in it. And I said, no. This would give you short-term numbers, but it would hurt the brand. And, and so, so that's why you always have this kind of tension between sales and marketing about, you know, what do you need to achieve? Is it short-term? Is it long-term? And then what do you need to do in order to achieve that? Oh, that's so interesting. Okay, I have one last question for the both of you. The first one would go to Mr. Go. How should influencers pitch themselves and their services to corporate companies when wanting to work with people like yourself? Oh, this is a good one. Now, inf influencer is very creative. When you work with a corporate, corporate don't think this way, all right? Be careful, huh? When you pitch for a client, uh, even Harvey Normans or Nokia, uh, no more Nokia, sorry, uh, Apple, all right? <laughs> now, you, to, uh, you must understand, right? Your corporate development or business development is very important. You must think alike about these people. They have a different layer, different people who will take care of them because they're a big, big structure organization. But I know you like to do everything from 
production to shoot to everything you could do by yourself. But business development is slightly different. When you talk to the corporate people, you want some sale from them. You need to speak their language. You can't just go in to say that I give you this content, I give you this content, I give you this content. That's not good enough. At the end of the day, they will ask you, what is the sale revenue? So if you're going to tell me you're going to do a content, no sale revenue, you say, please, thank you very much. We're not, not very keen. Now, bring someone who understands about a corporate. The corporate people, because they, they, they have a structure, right? They will give you a certain dollar. I look at my, my, my uh, marketing uh, uh, expenses, right? Very few dollars go into the influencer. I myself also don't understand. Majority go to the media corp and the SBH. Big, the amount is huge. Why never go to the influencer? So maybe I met one influencer trying to discuss with me. I said, the way he pitched, I'm not sure whether the corporate can take it. Because most of the corporate, they are quite structured. So maybe you have to change the way you pitch and who to go is another thing. You may be the best content creator, but you may not be the best salesperson who can pitch the sales. So please bring someone who can take the money from out from his pocket. You know, then you can do the good productions and so and so on. You can do that. So impress them. I'll give you an example, right? When I started with $5,000, why don't you put up your hand? Do you have $5,000? And who have $5,000? You have $5,000? I, I believe majority people have $5,000. So when I started my business with $5,000, right? In 25 years, I listed, I five listed two acquisitions. So in average, three years, it's one listed company. Why is this happening? Not only work hard, I believe the influencer work harder than anyone because they are very driven. Their brain is very active, in, especially midnight, they're very active. All right? Okay, I'm not sure after drinking they will be active, okay? That way is another point of that. Now, we can, I can achieve, I believe you can do it. You are very smart people. So you must understand how to turn your branding. I want you to take, before you go home, remember two things, all right? When you deal with a corporate to take their money, you must think like the corporate people. Pitch them and see how to get their money and they trust you. All right, this is number one. Number two, establish your brand. That is your intellectual property. The more valuable it can cost you to 100 million. You may not believe me. You say, George, your name is called George or you're called Gigi, George Go, right? So how can I turn Gigi into something? I... There's a lot of demonstration in the world. Many, many brands have turned into multi-million dollars. You say, no, 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 Singapore is very small. Now, don't think about only Singapore, my friend. Because we have a very good logistic now. Logistic is not an issue anymore after the Amazon. When I, we, 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 everything is doable in terms of logistic. Take care of your brand well. You can exhibit your own brand. The brand will be value a lot of money. Maybe at the end of the day, you may not have the best idea anymore. You can hire people for, for content creation. But your brand will worth a lot of money. So remember only two points, okay, before you go home, okay? Thank you. Okay, so basically is know your branding, bring someone who is good at negotiation with you, and also speak the corporate language. Okay, for the last question, Mr. Ditzel, um, before we end this up, um, do you feel like with your experience in marketing and, and branding, right, is social media marketing a part of digital marketing or is it a whole faculty and uh, specialty in itself today in terms of like being a department in a company? So most of the time it wouldn't be an individual department in the company, it would be part of digital marketing. Right. Um, but um, I don't think it really matters where, where you put it. The, it. What matters is that you have it and that you understand the importance of it. Because we've, we've seen, and, and George and I have been around for a while, um, so we've, we've seen over time this shift, right, away from kind of more traditional media, from media where basically it's a power shift, right? The power was with the advertiser, right? They put something on TV, they put something on a billboard, they put something on the radio, wherever, and people didn't have a voice. Now, people have a voice and people have a choice. So that's why everybody's going into social, everybody's going into content, everybody's going into storytelling, because you need to produce something that people want to see. 
not something that you are forcing them to see. And whatever you want to call that department uh, doesn't matter so much as in understanding that this is the way of the future. So I think everybody needs to work a little bit harder from a corporate side to produce something that people really want to see and not just skip as soon as they can skip it. I think that's very insightful and very um, helpful for both the corporates and content creators to understand where each side is coming from. With that, uh, we'd like to end this session. Thank you, Mr. Go, and thank you, Mr. Ditzel. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.